Hi, this is Shane from Sidecode and in this presentation we will learn how to create a Visual Studio project for Sidecode team development while enabling IntelliSense or Sidecode. Source control is employed for various reasons. One of them is to enable team development. It makes it easy to bring in new developers and get them up and running in no time. The solutions properly configured for source control are easily portable. The only limitation is that it requires you to have Sidecore assemblies as part of the project and source control them. Let's extend our existing project that we created in the previous video to support team development for Sidecore scenario. So let's open our existing project. If you are one of those following along, then you already have the Sidecore 7 project configured on your machine in the similar state as mine to support single developer environment. That is, no source control required scenario. In case you just begin, please watch the video titled Enabling IntelliSense for Sidecore in Visual Studio from Developer Fundamentals series on Sidecore CP Training YouTube channel. Assuming that you have the project in similar state as mine, we will perform the extra steps to make the project suitable for team development in Sidecore. Let's look at the current setup. We have dropped the sidecore.kernel.dll in the bin folder and excluded the file from the project to avoid overwriting of DLLs in the CMS root. Next, we added the reference of sidecore.kernel choosing from the bin folder. We set copy local to false to ensure that the Visual Studio doesn't create a copy of this file into the bin folder. These are the only settings we need to change in the existing project to enable it for source control to support team development in Sidecore. At this point, you might be tempted to source control this project including the bin folder. Well, if you try, it's not going to work. The reason behind this is that we have excluded Sidecore.kernel DLL from the project. So, it is not under source control. The files excluded from the project do not qualify for source control. Though the solution builds perfectly on your machine but the other developers, once they open and build from the source control, get build errors. Moreover, as a best practice, never source control bin folder. The bin folder is a store for dynamically generated files. We should never source control dynamically generated files as all the developers have their own versions of generated files anyways. Now, as a quick fix, you might try to include the DLLs into the project. Well, never do so, as in the first place, the idea is to avoid DLL overwriting in Sidecore CMS root. The moment you include them into project, these DLLs will overwrite the DLLs available in Sidecore CMS root on publishing. Hmm, tough situation. Well, not so. Let's first make a few necessary changes to support Sidecore development in team environment. Let's delete the sidecore.kernel.dll. Let's also remove the broken sidecore.kernel reference and the stage is set now for new configurations. Create a new folder called Sidecore library drop the required Sidecore assemblies into the folder. In my case, I just need Sidecore.kernel. Add a reference to newly added Sidecore.kernel DLL. Say add, say ok, remember to set copy local to false. Build your solution. And it builds perfectly. Publish your project and it works fine. Though so, we are all set for team development but this approach has a side effect. Let's look inside Sidecore 7 CMS root to understand what is the side effect. You will observe that it also copied the Sidecore library folder along with the Sidecore.kernel DLL. Well, this is something that we wanted to avoid. We do not need 
these DLLs along with Sitecore library folder in other environments. The Sitecore library folder is part of the project to allow for team development and only required in the developer environment. By just making a very small change, you can also avoid this side effect. Right click on your sitecore.kernel.dll, choose properties and from the build action, select none. Save, build and we see that it builds perfectly. Just to prove my case, I will first go and delete that library folder from my Sitecore 7 CMS root. Let's republish. Let's cross check if we still have the file there. Refresh and we see the Sitecore library is not being copied now. Well, this is what we were aiming for. Cool. As a last resort, we should go and cross check if the IntelliSense is still working for us. Let's test for IntelliSense and the behavior here could be different for some of us. Ideally, we should not get IntelliSense as we don't have sitecore.kernel dropped into bin. So how come some of us get IntelliSense? This is a stage where I have seen people complaining that Visual Studio behaves finicky with sitecore IntelliSense. The ideal behavior is that you should not get IntelliSense. So what is the reason behind it? Why some of us get the IntelliSense? Why Visual Studio behaves so? Well, it is not Visual Studio. It is actually ReSharper. Yes, ReSharper. As we just saw, I don't have IntelliSense right now. Now let's go ahead and resume my ReSharper. For this presentation, I suspended my ReSharper. Tools, Options, choose ReSharper and click the Resume command. The ReSharper is resumed now. Click OK. Let's check for IntelliSense once again. And as you see, I get the IntelliSense. Come on, what's going on here? Well, the answer lies in how IntelliSense works in Visual Studio. Visual Studio and ReSharper both reflect the referred assembly for type discovery and then store them into their own caches. Reflector IntelliSense goes a step further and reflects upon any added reference and keeps them into its own cache. So even if we delete Microsoft cache of reflected schemas like this, we still get IntelliSense. As IntelliSense for Sitecore is being produced from ReSharper's reflected schema folder. That is its own local cache of reflected schemas for IntelliSense. And this also explains why we have this green zigzag. The green zigzag is a Visual Studio way of complaining. Hey, I've looked into bin and gap, but I'm not able to discover about this type. And the moment you drop sitecore.kernel into the bin folder, Visual Studio happily removes all those green zigzag lines. So dropping the DLL in bin folder removes the green zigzag. We must remember to exclude the DLLs from project so that they do not keep overwriting the DLLs already available in bin folder of CMS root. As already discussed in a video titled Enabling IntelliSense for Sitecore in Visual Studio on Sitecore CP Training YouTube channel. Now we see as a best practice there are four conditions for an ideal source controlled Sitecore project for team development. The first is that the assemblies need to be source controlled so that other team members receive them once they do a get latest. The second condition is that DLLs must be available in bin folder which is not source controlled as a best practice because it is a store for dynamically generated content. Dropping the DLLs in the bin folder provides for Visual Studio IntelliSense if you are not using ReSharper and removes the green zigzag. And the third is you must exclude the DLLs in the bin folder to avoid overwriting. If you recall, as a fourth condition, we have set up the build action to null for Sitecore assemblies in the Sitecore library. The Sitecore library folder along with its assemblies is only required to support development in Visual Studio for IntelliSense and build. Going a step ahead, we may avoid it by creating a separate Visual Studio project to source control library of Sitecore assemblies 
and use it across multiple projects to do away with setting of build action property. Let's extend our project to support this approach. Fire a new instance of Visual Studio, run as administrator, create a new class library project, Windows class library, name it site code 7 library. Keep it in any suitable location. I'm going to keep it at the same level as my site code 7 project. Ensure that you have unchecked create directory for solution. Say ok. Delete the class file. Create a new folder and name it something like binaries. Drop your assemblies into the folder. Save the project. Go back to your site code 7 project. As you see, we already removed the sidecore library folder from the project and the sidecore.kernel reference is also not available. Click the solution node. Say add existing project. Add your sidecore 7 project to the solution. Go ahead add a reference to sidecore.kernel from the binaries folder of the newly added sidecore 7 libraries project. Browse. We are into Sitecode 7 libraries binary folder. Select sitecode.kernel.dll. Say add. Say ok. Ensure that you set copy local to false. Build and you should be able to build successfully. Let's check for IntelliSense. As you see, I get the IntelliSense. in the markup view as well as in the code view. Let's try building and it builds perfectly. I find this approach very simple and easy to manage as you can add Sitecore 7 library project to any number of Sitecore solution you're working on and it serves as a single source control library for any number of Sitecore projects. Well, there are more advanced ways of controlling these conditions using build configurations with a tool like MS Build. Now, if you're wondering where to keep your custom settings, see you in next video. We welcome your comments and feedback on our YouTube channel, Sitecore CP Training. Your wish, our command. Please share a topic or feature of your choice that you would like to learn next. Once again, I'm Sane from Sitecore. Thanks for watching.